Hi, welcome to lesson six. In the last lesson, you learned some basic Swift code. Let me ask you something. How does a user interact with an app? Usually it's something like the user takes an action, such as tapping a news headline, and the app reacts by displaying that article. Action, reaction. Well, that implies that when the user takes an action, we need to be able to run some specific pieces of code. In that case, we need a way to organize our code into bite-sized chunks so that when the user takes this action, we run this block of code, and when the user takes that action, we run another block of code. Well, Swift has something called functions, and this is basically wrapping up a block of code and giving it a name so that when we need to execute that code, we just call it by its name. So let's dive into a playground and see how we use functions. We're gonna start by creating a brand new playground. So go ahead, get started with the playground. Under iOS, let's choose blank playground. And I'm gonna call this the functions playground and just save it on the desktop. So in order to declare a function, we use the keyword FUNC, and then we type a space, and then we type in the name of the function. Now the name that we give the function is the same name that we're going to call the function with to execute the code inside the function. So I'm gonna call this one to say hello. The next thing we do is open up a pair of rounded brackets like that. Now inside those brackets, there can be things called parameters, which we're gonna cover later on in this lesson. But for now, we're going to just leave it as an empty set of rounded brackets. Next, we're gonna hit space and find the curly brackets on your keyboard and we're going to open up a pair of those just like that. An opening one and a closing one. And inside of those curly brackets, that's where the code for our function goes. So let's hit enter a couple of times to create some space. And inside this function, I'm going to have only a single line of code. I'm just gonna print something into the console. So I'm gonna print out hello, just like that. Now notice that in the console, nothing gets output because the code inside my function is not going to be run until I actually call that function by its name. Now let's go down here in line 12 and I'll demonstrate how to call it. All you have to do is type the name of the function followed by those rounded brackets like that. And then you're going to see the output because it's running this line of code. When you write a function, you usually think about performing a specific task. In our earlier use case, you might write a function to display an article so that when the user taps on the news headline, you can run that function to display that article. Now, sometimes a function may require some sort of input to perform its task. For example, what happens when the user taps on headline number one versus news headline number two? Are you gonna write a different function for every single news headline? Of course you're not. And furthermore, the news changes every day, so you can't write a function for a piece of news that hasn't come out yet. Instead, you write a function that displays an article, but it doesn't know or care which one it is. You have to specify which article it should show when you call that function by passing that article into the function. And then your function will take that input and display that article. You can do this with function parameters. Remember those rounded brackets in the function call? Well, inside of those brackets, you can specify what sort of data you want to be passed into the function when it's called. In the example below, we declare a function called say hello to. In between the brackets, you have a parameter called name that is of the data type string. That kind of looks like a variable declaration, but without the var keyword, right? Whenever you call the say hello to function, you're going to have to supply a piece of text with that function call. Now let's go into the playground and see how we can work with function parameters. Now, as you were typing that function name, you might have noticed Xcode try to autocomplete it for you. So let me demonstrate just in case that didn't happen for you. Let me erase this function call and let me start typing the names more uh, slowly. S A Y. As you can see, it pops up this autocomplete menu trying to uh, help you out. So if you see what you want to type out already, you can simply hit enter because it's already highlighted the function call I wanted to type out or if it's not this particular one, but you see it somewhere down here, you can hit the up or down arrow keys on your keyboard to select it and then hit enter. So we're gonna select this one because that's what we were intending to call and it will complete that function call for you. All right, so now before I demonstrate the function with the parameters, why don't we go ahead and add a comment here and just call this one the basic function because we're going to have a couple of different things in here. So this one's a function with a with parameters, I'm gonna say. 
All right, so let's write out our function say hello to, and then we're going to open up our pair of uh, round brackets. But this time inside there, we are going to put a parameter. Now this parameter is going to dictate that when you call this function say hello to, you're going to have to pass in some data. And this parameter basically dictates what sort of data you're supposed to pass in. So I'm going to call my parameter name and then colon followed by the type of data that I want to be passed in. And there you go. That's one parameter that needs to be passed in. Space, open up a pair of uh, curly brackets. In between there, we're going to hit enter a couple of times where we are going to write our code. Now in here, I want to print out the name that gets passed in. Well, how do I access that data that gets passed in? Well, this parameter here actually has a parameter name and conveniently we called it name. So this is how we access that data that gets passed in by referencing this parameter name. So all I need to do is say print name like that. And down here, of course, nothing gets output until we call the function. Now watch this. I'm going to start typing S A Y. And now Xcode will show me there are a couple of different function calls I can make. This one was our basic function. And this one is our new one that includes a parameter. So I'm going to go ahead and press the down key and then press enter. And it's going to basically auto complete that function. Um, and it's going to highlight the parameter that we need to uh, specify in order to complete the function call. So I'm going to pass in a string piece of data in there, open up a pair of quotation marks, and let's put in Tom. Right? And this actually completes the function call. And you can see here, down here, it says prints out Tom. And this piece of text gets passed in to the function call through this parameter. And then this line of code basically just takes that parameter and prints it out into the console. Notice that in here, um, I have to specify that parameter name followed by colon and followed by the actual piece of data that I want passed in. Now, what if I want to print out hello Tom instead of just the name. Well, I'm going to show you something cool where you can actually insert a variable or a parameter. Your parameter is basically a variable. You know, insert that variable into a string or a piece of text. So let's write a piece of text here. Let's say hello and space. And then in order to insert name dynamically into this piece of text, you do backslash, open up a pair of rounded brackets like that. And in between those rounded brackets, you put the name of your variable. In our case, it would be just name. And so now you can see down here, it says, hello, space, Tom. Don't worry about this. If you, you know, don't remember how to do that, we're going to actually use this again in a couple of lessons. Now I want to show you how you can specify a function that has more than one parameter. So right up here, we have name colon string. If we wanted to specify a second parameter, all we need to do is just hit, hit comma and space and we're going to add another parameter. This time I'm going to call it h colon int. It's going to be int data type. And so now Xcode detects because we've changed it so that calling this function requires two data inputs now. Xcode notices that, hey, we're not doing that here and that's an error. So I'm just going to erase this line of code. Say. Now I can actually just select it from this autocomplete menu and hit enter. As you can see, this structure kind of coincides with what's up here, right? I have name, colon, and then I have to specify the string data to pass in, followed by a comma, and then age, which is the second parameter name, colon, followed by the actual int data that I want passed in. So let's pass in uh, Tom, and I press tab. It allows me to just jump straight to specifying the second parameter there. And let me just put 35. And of course, it still says hello, Tom, because we haven't incorporated this second parameter. So in this statement here, hello, name, let's put comma, you are, I want to insert the age at this point, age, space, years old. Now, What's output down here? Just give a moment for Xcode to process the new code. Hello, Tom, you're 35 years old. And that's just based on what we type in here. You know, I can say 45, and that's gonna turn into 45 years old. 
So you can expand on this and you can do three parameters or four parameters, uh, but I wouldn't go crazy with this. In the future, you're gonna learn about how uh, you can actually collect pieces of data together and specify them in a single parameter. But for now, you know, you're passing simple values around. And so if you need to pass in three or four or five, you know, or eight parameters, then go ahead and do that. One thing I do wanna point out though, is that in your function call, you can actually uh, make it so that you can omit these parameter names here. So I could call my function like this, right? Right now, this is going to be an error, right? But let me show you how to make it so that you can omit these parameter names. And that kind of saves you some typing. Uh, so here, up here, you can specify underscore and then space right in front of that parameter name. Same with the second parameter underscore and then space. When you do that, let's just erase this function call because this is now incorrect. I'm going to use autocomplete again. Say hello to, now you can see this entire thing is highlighted. If I specify my parameter, you can see now I don't need to put those labels in there. What you're actually doing with this underscore is you're omitting the argument label for that parameter. But I'm not going to go into that now because I don't want to confuse you. If you do want to learn about that, I'll link to something in the description below and you can look into it if you're curious. But down the line, once you learn more about Swift, you're going to learn about it anyways. For now, all you need to know is that underscore space in front of your parameter name allows you to omit it from the function call like this. Now you know how to write functions which expect some sort of input to work with. Another great use of functions is to take some data input, transform it, and then return that result. Functions can do this by using the return keyword. In the function below, it takes an integer input and then it adds four to it and then it gives it back to us. Notice in this function declaration that after the rounded brackets, we have an arrow and then we have a data type, int. This indicates the type of data that the function will give back when you call it. Let's go back to our playground and try it out. All right, so now let's create another section down here and let's create some space here so we can look at the middle of the screen. And I'm going to call this function with return value. Okay, so let's type out our function that we demonstrated. Add four to, that's capital T, and open up a bracket. We're gonna type in x colon int, that's going to be the data that needs to be passed in, an integer. And this time we are going to type dash, make sure you've got a space here, dash greater than symbol and then space. And now we specify the type of the data that this function will return. So I'm actually going to return an int data type. Let's open up a pair of curly brackets and let's create some space down here. So what I'm going to do here, I am going to create a variable. Let's say, I'm gonna call this the sum equals, and we're gonna take the parameter that gets passed in, which is x, and I'm going to add four to it. So the variable sum contains x plus four. Now, since we specified that this function actually returns a value, we need to somehow get this sum to be returned. And we use a keyword called return. That's exactly how it sounds. And we are going to return this sum just like that. And in fact, if you forget the return keyword, but you have specified up here that this function returns something, Xcode isn't going to like that. It's going to spit out an error actually. And it's telling you that it's missing a return statement. So you're gonna to have to return the sum. Now what happens with a function that returns a value? How do you call it and how do you get that value that it returned? Well, let's first start by calling the function. So add four and autocomplete pops up. Just gonna hit enter. Actually, I wanna point out something special here. You can see here in this autocomplete menu, on this left column, you can see int. This tells you that it returns an int data type. Okay, let's hit enter. And now we have to specify the data input. So let's put 10 in there. So the actual function code will add four to it and then it's going to return 14. Oh, where, where did that 14 go? Well, we actually have to keep track of it by assigning it to a variable. 
So let's create a new variable. Let's call it result equals add four two, and then we pass in ten. So this function is going to take our ten, add four to it. It's going to spit out fourteen, and we are going to assign that data to our result variable. And now down here, let's try printing out the contents of result, and we're going to see that it is fourteen. Now you might ask me. Why do I have to use this return value? Why do I have to create a function that uses this return keyword and I have to specify the data type that it returns? Can't I just simply refer to this variable sum because doesn't it contain my x plus four? Well, that brings me to my next topic, variable scope. I want you to try down here to print out the variable sum. You're going to get an error once Xcode gets around to processing the code. And it's saying that use of unresolved identifier sum, which basically means that it can't find this keyword, it can't find what sum is. And the reason for that is because all of the code in between these two curly brackets, you know, the code that's inside this function is inside of its own scope. It's kind of like its own little bubble. So any data that you have in here, the variables that you declare and stuff like that, you can't access it from outside of this scope. So that's why, even though I've declared sum in here, this variable, I can't access it from outside of the function. I can access it from inside this function, you know, because it's in the same scope. So I can actually print out sum right there, and that would be fine. As soon as Xcode finishes processing it, so now we actually see two fourteens because the first one is from this statement printing it out, and then the second fourteen is from Printing out the result of calling out that function, but anyways, my point is that from inside the function, you can reference that variable that you declare in there because when you declare that variable in here, it only exists in this scope within this function. You can't access it from outside that function, which would be not in this scope. Again, it helps to think of the code inside the function as it, in its own little bubble. So that's why, if you want to get the data out, you use the return keyword right there, and you also have to specify up here that this function returns some sort of data. And in case it wasn't clear, it's actually each function has its own scope. So let me declare another function here. I'm just going to call it function c.、Um, from within this function, it's got its own scope, so I can't access sum because that's in This function's little bubble, and you can see here that Xcode doesn't know what sum is. And if I declared a variable inside function c, I wouldn't be able to access that from outside that function or from within another function either. So you can think of each function, the code inside of it is in its own little world, and what you do in there is kind of invisible to the outside unless you start returning the data. All right, so let's erase this. Test function here, and I guess one last thing before we move on is this yellow line is called a warning, and Xcode is just trying to optimize things here. It's saying that some after we assigned something to it, it was never changed again. So why don't we use a constant instead of a variable? So we can actually use let instead of var, which is something you learned about a couple of lessons ago. All right. Today you learned about how you can organize your code into functions. You learned about function parameters where you can pass data into functions for them to work with. We also covered return values where functions can return data back to us. And finally, we covered variable scope where the variables and data inside of a function only exist within the scope of that function. Believe it or not, there's still more to functions that you can learn about. But what we've covered in this lesson is more than sufficient for what you need right now. If you do want to learn more about functions right now, I'll add some links into the description to additional videos that I have, as well as the official Apple documentation for functions. And don't forget to download my handy cheat sheet as well as the lesson worksheet so that you can practice working with functions some more. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel by hitting that subscribe button below. And if you don't want to miss a video, make sure you click on that bell icon as well. Now I want to turn it over to you. We are two lessons in to Swift programming with one more left to go. Do you feel like you've got a grip on it so far? Yes or no? Let me know by leaving a comment below. And lastly, to get the worksheet for this lesson and the cheat sheet, if you haven't downloaded in the previous lesson already, just follow the URL in the description below or on the screen right now. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next lesson.